Remember when playing a game at 30 frames per second was considered smooth? Or when your graphics card needed its own power supply just to run Crisis? When GPU fans sounded like jet engines and installing drivers felt like diffusing a bomb? Well, buckle up, because we're going on a nostalgic journey through the entire history of AL AMD Radeon GPUs, from the prehistoric Radeon 7000, all the way to the futuristic RX 9000 series. Let's start with the pre-HD era. The Radeon 7000 series was ATI's first big step into the modern GPU world. It had features like hardware transform and lighting, which basically meant the graphics card finally did 3D work instead of the CPU. Then came the Radeon 8500, ATI's answer to NVIDIA's GeForce 3. It brought DirectX 8 support and introduced pixel shaders, which allowed for more realistic textures and lighting, a big step for early 2000s gaming. The Radeon 9000, 9200, 9500, 9600, 9700, and 9800 were legends, especially the Radeon 9700 Pro. This thing crushed the GeForce 4 and gave ATI its first real win against Nvidia and became a fan favorite for years. Then came the flashy Radeon X300, X700, X800, and X850 cards with cool names and new looks. The X800 XT Platinum Edition was a monster, battling NVIDIA's 6800 Ultra for GPU dominance, a TI focused on image quality and efficiency. It wasn't just about brute force anymore. This was the golden age of the HD branding, HD 2000 series. The HD 2900 XT debuted AMD's unified shader architecture, but it ran hot enough to cook breakfast. Performance was okay, but power draw, not so much. HD 3000 series, AMD learned from its mistakes. The HD 3870 was faster, cooler, and way more efficient. It wasn't groundbreaking, but it stabilized AMD's reputation. HD 4000 series, then came the HD 4870, the people's champ. This GPU offered incredible performance for the price and punched above its weight. It forced Nvidia to cut prices, a huge win for gamers everywhere. HD 5000 series. This generation introduced DirectX 11 and iFinity, which let you run multiple monitors for the first time, the HD 5870 was the fastest GPU in the world when it launched. Pure domination. HD 6000 series cards like the HD 6870 offered great performance per watt, not revolutionary, but very solid and reliable. HD 7000 series, then came a legend, the HD 7970, the first 28 nanometer GPU and the start of IMD's graphics core next, GCN architecture. It aged like fine wine, staying competitive for years. AMD decided to change naming again. Now we got R5, R7, and R9. The R5 series targeted budget gamers, offering solid 1080p ice performance without breaking the bank. They often lacked the full feature set of higher-end GPUs, but were perfect for entry-level systems. Many R5 cards supported AMD's GCN architecture and provided modern driver support, making them a good long-term value. The R7 line aimed at mainstream gamers who wanted good 1080p or even modest 1440p performance. They struck a balance between cost and performance, often offering good upgrade potential and power efficiency improvements over previous generations. With features like Mantle and improved driver maturity, R7 cards brought new gaming experiences at lower cost. The R9 series represented high-end gaming for this era, the Go Big or Go Home Radeon cards. With models like the Fury and Nano, AMD experimented with new memory technologies and compact form factors. Some R9 cards delivered strong performance at 4K for the time and supported multi-monitor setups via iFinity. Next up, we got the 400 and 500 series era, RX 460, 470, 480. The RX 460 was designed for eSports and budget builds, offering decent performance with low power consumption. The RX 470 brought much better performance for mainstream gamers and made 1080p high settings very feasible. The RX 480 was a standout, delivering near premium performance at mainstream pricing, which shook up the market. RX 550, 560, 570, 
570, 580, 590, the RX 550 served as an ultra-budget step for casual gaming and system upgrades. The RX 560 offered modest extra performance, hitting a sweet spot for 1080p. The RX 570 and 580 became incredibly popular as budget 1080 and 1440p GPU. The RX 590 pushed it further with slightly higher clocks and better performance for marginal cost. Next up, we got the Vega era, Vega 56 and Vega 64. The Vega 64 in particular aimed at high-end 1440p and 4K gaming, but came with high power consumption and heat output, which limited some adoption. The Vega 56 offered a more efficient variant and better value. Despite their potential, Vega cards were sometimes held back by power slash heat, driver maturity issues, and competition from NVIDIA. Radeon 7. The Radeon 7 was AMD's bold move. A 7 nanometer GPU targeted at both gaming and creators with 16 gigabytes of HBM2 memory and strong performance in raw compute tasks. It delivered very good performance in some workloads, especially creative content, but was expensive and less efficient than ideal for gaming. Now we got the 5000 series, RX 5300, 5500, 5600. The RX 5300 and 5500 series offered very good 1080p performance with great efficiency, making them excellent for budget gamers. The RX 5600 stepped it up for 1440 key gaming and longer term relevance. These cards also benefited from improved drivers, improved IPC and modern feature support. For many system builders, this generation was the sweet spot RX 5500 XT, 5600 XT, 5700 XT. The XT models of this generation brought higher clocks, more compute units, and made a stronger push into high performance gaming at mainstream pricing threshold the RX 5700 XT, in particular, shook things up by offering excellent performance versus NVIDIA to counterparts for the price. Next up, the 6000 series, RX 6400, 6500 XT, 6600. The RX 6400 and 6500 XT were AMD's budget entry, offering solid 1080p all performance with much better efficiency and support for features like ray tracing. The RX 6500 XT in particular was a popular upgrade for casual gamers who still wanted modern features like hardware accelerated ray tracing. The RX X6600 brought higher performance and made 1080p high slash 1440p viable for many gamers without spending a lot. RX6700, 6800. Moving up the ladder, the RX6700 and 6800 series targeted 1440p gaming and higher refresh rates with more compute units, higher clocks, and larger memory buffers. For example, the RX6800 offered very competitive performance with NVIDIA's offerings at the time, while often being cheaper. RX 6900, 6950 XT. The RX 6900 were aimed at enthusiast 4K gaming, high refresh rates, and performance rivaling. The RX 6950 XT, for instance, delivered strong 4K raw performance and often excelled in rasterization heavy titles. These high end cards also required quality cooling and often took full advantage of AMD's new features like smart access memory when paired with Ryzen CPUs. Next up, the 7000 series, RX 7600, 7700, 7700 XT, the RX 7600, and 7700. With improved IPC and larger caches, it delivered strong 1080p and even solid 1440p on performance in many titles. For gamers upgrading from older generations, it provided a modern experience without the flagship cost. The RX 7700 XT stepped up performance considerably, making 1440 p high ultra settings much more attainable rx 7800 xt 7900 xt 7900 xtx with the rx 7800 xt amd targeted serious gamers and high refresh 1440p or even entry 4k setups the rx 7900 xt is amd's upper mid enthusiast designed for 4k gaming at high refresh rates and high settings it competed head-to-head -head with nvidia's flagship tiers in 
in many titles. At the top, RX7 900 XTX delivered flagship performance for gaming and content creation. It offered high frame rates in 4K, excellent feature support for next-gen monitors and streaming setups. And now at last, the Beast 9000 series, RX 9060, 9060 XT. The RX 9060 brings the full power of RDNA 4 to the entry slash mainstream segment, offering modern ray tracing, AI accelerated upscaling, and high efficiency. The RX 9060 XT delivers a significant performance uplift over the non-XT variant, making high refresh 1440p and even some 4K gaming feasible. It boasts improved clocks, more compute units, and enhanced memory bandwidth. RX 9070, 9070 XT. The RX 9070 is a strong enthusiast level option designed for 1440p ultra slash high or entry 4K gaming with ray tracing and AI features fully enabled. And now the final boss, RX 9070 XT brings top tier performance, 4K high settings, high refresh rates, advanced ray tracing, AI driven upscaling at represents AMD D's most ambitious consumer GPU release yet, targeting gamers and creators who demand the best. If you enjoyed this breakdown, hit that like button, subscribe for more Tech Explained Simply, and comment which Radeon card you are gaming on.